I'm just going to clear off the uh, my workbench. I have the uh, Tomiko bench hook. I've been working on some uh, <coughs> some Tomiko. Uh, well, what I'll be doing for the next few minutes is uh, showing some of uh, my bench accessories. Now I use a hand plane conjunction with bench accessories to uh, to work wood and uh, try to avoid using machines as much as possible. So this is a uh, this is a bench cleaning stuff. I've, I have several of these, and they're interchangeable between my two workbenches. I have two workbenches that are similar. They're uh, Veritas workbenches, so I've designed these. They sort of fit over the edge, and they lock in with a with a wooden dowel. And the beauty of these workbenches is that they're actually designed the same. They're uh, they're very similar in the orientation and the spacing between the bench, the bench dog holes. So. That's a little better. You can actually see the uh, how this particular bench accessory plugs into the other work. <clears throat> so, uh, so this is uh, this is probably as thin as I can go with this accessory. Um, what I mean by that is uh, where it's <clears throat> still uh, thick enough to uh, to be able to uh, to be to remain rigid when I create this uh, this angle. And that's a quarter inch. You probably go down to uh, three sixteenths if you can find a three sixteenths MDF panel or some plywood, or a pulp birch plywood. And the beauty of this particular appliance is that you can actually raise it or lower it. So if I need to raise it, I can just uh, like shim it underneath or something. Idea that so this I can shim it and then it's actually raised. So if you have a thicker board. You can actually bring it up to this level. It's probably set to uh, close to uh, three eighths of an inch now. Yeah, it's three eighths of an inch. So I'll start with this. And uh, I'll get a piece of wood here. So I, what I do is I normally check for the uh, grain orientation and. Uh, so I should be in the stretch. I'm going to be using a four and a half smoother for this. It's only because I it's my favorite plane and plane. I just tend to use this for almost everything now. So the important the important thing is to get is to strike for wide shavings as wide as the Why does the actual uh, 
the board itself, and you can see this board was uh, was not the uh, the faces were not parallel to each other to start with. So I'm going to be uh, correcting that. You can do it different ways, but I normally just plane one side and then move it towards the center. This is, uh, so I just want to demonstrate how this particular cleaning stuff works. It's, uh, it's a plug-in. Most of my bench accessories are plug-in. It's almost there. What I should do is uh, measure this for square. Both ends actually a measure for square. That's really square. So that's uh, so I've got so I've essentially thickness this down to uh, probably three eighths of an inch. It's uniform. Faces are parallel to each other, and uh, and that's as simple as that. Using this uh, this bench accessory, uh, I had this set for fairly fat shavings. Uh, for some reason, from took some work earlier, but I just pat that off. So the the final shaving after I've uh, corrected that that sort of bevel surface, that final shaving is as thick as the uh, sort of. <laughs> Is as wide as the uh, the actual the component, the board that I'm uh, I'm thicknessing. So that's so I ensure that just by doing that, I don't have to constantly remeasure the uh, the faces for parallel and they're everything square. So that's an easy way. Once once you've uh, checked it for square and everything's uh, square, is to uh, just Try to get consistent shavings as wide as the uh, surface, of the face, and that uh, ensures that uh, you're 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 hand in the right direction and the right. Hand plane is correct. Let me try another. This is uh, so I'll try that again with a longer uh, maple. Yes, maple. I'll try that with this. rough on this face. Basically trying to create a reference face. Well that's that's a reference face I just created. It's 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 almost a finished surface ready for ready for the uh, for uh, for finishing, really. What I'll do is, uh, I'll some of this planing stuff for the lower construction. So now, now that I have the reference face smoothed and uh, dressed, I'll just confirm that it's set to square and 90 degrees. This is the reference face. And another thing I like to do is mark it as a reference. And then flip it over and we can, uh, once we have that reference surface, that reference face, we can dimension it to uh, the final thickness. Because this side is, uh, is rough. So, uh, let's say for example, it's uh, just below uh, three eighths. I want to bring it to uh, five sixteenths. Check for 
for drain direction again. Drain direction is critical when you're hand planing to avoid tear out. Everything works so much better when, when you're planing in the correct direction. The direction. So I'll just, I like to apply a kind of stick of wax here, a candle wax, or a, I forget what it's called, a candle maker's wax or something. And I like to apply some wax to the, uh, the sole, just so everything goes well. So at first we'll, uh, we'll get some uneven shavings, just because it's just the way the board's been, it's so rough that it's just a series of ridges and um, hills and valleys along the surface. Once you've uh, eliminated that, It's a good practice to remove shavings from the mouth of the hand plane so you can, for two reasons, to clear the mouth so they don't get jammed up in the mouth and the second reason is to, uh, so you can actually uh, monitor the, the shavings being produced so to ensure that they're as wide as the, as the board of the hand plane. dimension I would imagine so that's down to five sixteenths. It just needs a little bit of a, an adjustment. I can adjust it. The spaces are not quite parallel. Let me see what I can do here. I'll flip it over and try this. I have to watch myself because the uh, <coughs> the actual bench accessory is uh, is a quarter inch thick and this is five sixteenths so to try to hand plane anything below below the uh, the planing stuff we have a problem by planing into the planing stuff <laughs> are parallel to each other, we're at 5 sixteenths. So it's a matter of uh, practice, uh, get yourself a few boards and, and just practice doing this. You know, there isn't any, uh, the goal is just to, uh, to, be able, to be able to determine that the faces are parallel and you've, uh, you've reached the correct thickness just by using a hand plane and, and a simple planing stuff. Now uh, these planing stuffs you can of course uh, This is specific for this workbench, but it's tuned for this workbench, but you can easily create one for your own workbench. You just have to offset the, uh, when will I learn? Off offset the, uh, the dowel, the locking dowel, to the distance from the edge of the workbench to the dowel. So from, uh, from here to here, the center. Be, uh, now there is a technique to create these and it makes it very simple so you don't make a mistake. It's just basically to create this part, these two parts assembled, glued and uh, I've got dowels running through and then I, uh, I sort of uh, I raise the dowel into it with a center 
with a center marker and I mark it and then I uh, I can create a three quarter inch uh, or 20 millimeter uh, the bore and then fit a dowel in and then glue it. I mean the dowel really doesn't do much it just locks it in keeps it from from uh, from rotating. So so next I'll demonstrate the uh, I have several uh, accessories like this and I actually had a, lar a thicker, uh, a larger uh, planing stuff with a different orientation and it locks over two holes. So it's, uh, it's a little more uh, heavy duty. This is a bird's mouth accessory and what this does is it allows you to plane, hand plane boards on edge. So I'll get the wedges. So this, this in combination with the uh, with the wedges locks a piece in, and I'll show you how that works. Again, this is uh, all my bench accessories are uh, are plug in. So so this plugs in any two holes on any other one of my workbenches like this, like so. And then I take, a, <coughs> I'll, I'll grab a board that needs, uh, needs to have its, uh, its edge plank, hand plank and put it in here, lock it in, and then use the wedges to further lock it in. Everything, you don't even need a tool to, to perform this, it just... If a narrow board, this would be virtually, there is no other way to, to have to work the edge of this unless you're using a face vise, and I've got a face vise, but it's on the opposite side, but if you don't have a face vise, it's ideal, so, um, you know what I'll do for this, I won't use the uh, smoother, I'll use a small block plane. Strive for uh, shavings that are as wide as, as, as the edge itself, and you know you're in the right. You're not beveling that edge or chamfering that edge. And that's this is, this is cherry, which hand plates really well. One of my favorite boards, my uh, favorite woods. I used to use a lot of exotics in my uh, my furniture and, and my former uh, jewelry box uh, days 20, 25 years ago and then I moved on to furniture. I used a lot of exotics. I thought the exotics were more interested in domestic woods, but I've since gone back to uh, to domestic woods. They're, they're fine there. Well, there's so much more <clears throat> amenable to uh, to using hand tools, domestic woods. They're not as uh, dense and they don't have that interlocking grain. So as long as you've got the grain orientation correct, it just it works so much better. So that's that. I like to, uh, when I'm done with the plane, or if I'm parking the plane, I like to use a little strip of wood to keep the edge off the surface of the workbench. It's just something I do. You don't have to, it depends on how much you value your work on the surface. So that's the uh, bird's mouth. And uh, I can just flip this over and do this side now. Yeah, 
you notice I'm left handed, so that explains why I have, when I'm doing this demonstration, I'm showing you the, uh, this side of the workbench. It's away from the wall, and I have a face vise on the opposite side. And so I would normally, uh, at least as small you could, you could you just plant it in the face vise and, and work it there. But uh, if I get, go to that side of the workbench, you won't be seen. You won't be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm, And I'll show you how this works with a taller board, a thin towel board, and it works really well. Oh, there's something strange about these wedges. I'm not sure what it is. I just do light touch and I try to keep it from flexing. So this uh, this process cleans the edge, squares it off, and brings it down to a, you can reduce it down to a certain width after you rough rough cut it on the back side. That's the beauty of this uh, first mouth accessory with the wedges. And uh, what have I got here today? So many, so many of these. This is another cleaning stock, the one I was mentioning earlier. And uh, this, this plugs into two bench holes. Thinner than a quarter inch, just because they're just not they're not thick enough to have the dowels attached uh, glued into. And again, this the nice part of this is you can raise it, and this because this has two holes, two bench stocks, you can raise it to any height you want without even trimming it really. So if I'm, I'm playing this board, uh, a much much thicker board like this, it's about three quarters of an inch, I can. Rather than keep it down there, I can just raise it or even shim it. So this this uh, this this bench accessory doesn't wrap around the edge. It doesn't lock into the edge. Instead, it uses the system of two bench dogs that lock into uh, two bench holes. So, uh, you know, I demonstrated the bird's mouth accessory before earlier, but you don't necessarily have to use that to do edge work on this. In this case, because it's uh, pretty sure that's three quarters of an inch almost, uh, I can just place it on its side and <laughs> use a smoother. Shavings now are as wide as the uh, as the edge. That's a nice finished surface, and it's pretty confident that it's square. Yes, perfectly square, and it's always. It's always good to measure uh, how square it is at both ends and even rotate it just to ensure that the faces are parallel to each other. So that's, and then, of course, you can see the rough surface here. This is uh, super rough. Another, uh, something else you can do is mark the whole length and width of the, uh, 
of the surface here I'm cleaning just to ensure that you've cleaned off everything from that surface but this is because it's so rough it's obvious that once once I've hand planed it I, if you're working with a, a, a surface that's already smooth you want to use this system of penciling in marking the, uh, the pencil marks so you ensure that you've hand planed the whole surface so in this case I flip it around because the green orientation is reversed and I hand plane this So that, uh, that worked really well. That's four squared board, a little bit of strip. So, unless I'm actually <coughs> reducing it in width, I would stop there in this case. I wanted to show you the uh, tailwise setup I have also. I don't have enough time today. Uh, I'll bring the bird mouse, bird's mouth back. <laughs> I just realized this, this uh, piece of maple has uh, rough edges that need to be uh, smooth. I'll use the, uh, the smoother for this. After a while, you get pretty good at eyeballing to see if they're square, and you're, you're going to, uh, you can eyeball it without actually having to resort to measuring things constantly. Well, that's fairly uh, square and smooth. And I'll work this edge. Yeah, it's the flip side of the board. Let's reverse it. And, uh, Final shavings were <coughs> exactly the width of the uh, edge, so I know I'm on the right track here. I notice there's a slight bevel in this now. check if anybody's actually on the chat.
I'm done with that. It's 4.35 here in the afternoon, so I don't have much time for anything else today. Um, what I'll do next time is talk about the uh, sliding uh, tail vice system I have on this workbench, and I'll move my camera over and I can demonstrate that. Uh, it's over at this end, and it works in conjunction with an end vice. Uh, in this case, a twin screw vise, and I can, with a with a bench dog, I can clamp pieces in and, and uh, hand plane them on edge or on the face. With uh, you can see, you can almost see the. Uh, this is the uh, the face of the uh, tail vise, and it uh, slides along. So that's quite cool. So without without even without having a just having a workbench, an end vise. Without even having a face vise, which is on the opposite side, I can actually work everything from this side, and then use the face vise for other things like sawing uh, dovetails and sawing boards vertically, uh, rip cuts and that sort of thing. So I think I'll stop today and remove some shavings here. <laughs> That's the beauty of working with hand tools. Especially, specifically hand planes, they're just, you're just creating uh, shavings and not so much dust. There isn't any dust floating in the air from this, from these operations I've just demonstrated. So you really don't need any dust collection, any noisy dust collection. You're not operating any routers, any uh, any thickness planers, any bench top planers. So there's a lot to be said for uh, using hand tools uh, in your woodworking. Again, I've demonstrated the birch mouth accessory and the uh, bench accessory and the uh, cleaning stock plug-in. They're all plug-in. I have more plug-in accessories. I even also have a uh, cleaning board with a built-in stop. And uh, I use a, a masonite spacer and I can reduce the uh, uh, reduce the components that I can uh, I can hand plane down to a, down to uh, what is it? An eighth of an inch instead of a quarter of an inch. So I can bring it down to three sixteenths. I can go down as far as three sixteenths or maybe two sixteenths, one eighth of an inch in that case. Depends on the size of the spacer. So there's so much you can do um, with, with uh, this system of plug-in uh, bench, bench accessories that I'm demonstrating and I'll show that Another time, I don't even have it here. Actually, I've got three of them in here somewhere. So, and I use them. Uh, I use them mostly at the other workbench, which is at the far end of the uh, at the workshop. And it's diagonal across two windows, and which is the same workbench. And um, one other thing I like to mention is that I like to have the workbench away from the wall in every case. Um, when I have a much smaller uh, workshop. The, uh, the workbenches were against the wall because that's the only way it worked. I didn't have enough room. But um, you're, you're severely limited. You're, you're actually giving up a part of your workbench when you do that against the wall. So you only you're, you're, uh, you need to work with the, uh, the side that's away from the wall. <laughs> and this becomes a, a storage area. So these benches, they're, uh, they're built symmetrically with uh, you know what I mean? They're, they're arranged symmetrically, so all the, the, the dog poles are symmetric on either side and everything works. And there's a tool well in the middle. Um, so they're designed really to work on both sides and two people can work at this workbench at the same time. And that's an advantage too. So having it away from a wall is, um, I highly, highly advocate and recommend that because you can get so much, so much more versatility out of a workbench. Uh, functionality, versatility out of a workbench when it's away from the wall. And uh, like I said, I've done both. I've had workbenches against the wall and much smaller workshops. But if you, even if you do have a small workshop, try to set up your workbench away from the wall and arrange. If you're doing strictly hand plane, or hand tool work, you don't need as much machinery, maybe a bandsaw, so you can actually get away with uh, having it away from the wall. So. My last uh, live stream session, I was demonstrating uh, Kamiko, and I was using uh, the Kamiko uh, 
bench hook that I've designed specifically for Kamiko, but it's versatile and it works with uh, with not only with Kamiko but any any uh, any bench hook operations cross cutting with a Dazuki. <coughs> this time around, I demonstrated some of the bench accessories I use, and next time around, I'll demonstrate my sliding tail vice system and uh, all the measuring and uh, and. Uh, Precision tools I use for uh, for measuring for square, like these metal engineer squares or a double square. That's another tool I use. And these are the uh, the small brass uh, adjustable clamps that I use for specifically for Kamiko. They're almost you can almost say they were designed for that uh, that bench hook I designed. And it's uh, if you look at my if you go through my previous live stream, you'll see what I'm talking about. They're beautiful and they're small and they're thin. So it doesn't interfere with with any uh, with any cross cutting on the bench hook. So and the thickness ink sled. I'll, I'll give a demonstration of my thickness ink sled uh, at one, some point. And I use that to uh, thickness uh, strips of wood down to a predetermined thickness. So, for example, these are uh, slightly fatter than uh, than the final thickness, which should be five thirty seconds. So, for example, I uh, bring them between 5, 30 seconds and 6, 30 seconds and, then, and uh, thickness them down with a conjunction with the block plane and my thicknessing sled to the right thickness. I already have the reference surface. Or you can purchase uh, pre-dimensioned uh, Kamiko bars and work from that. So you only, all you need to do now is, uh, is uh, is cross cut them to size so this is already at 5.30 seconds that's already at 5.30 seconds and this is uh, slightly fatter it's just about 6.30 seconds so. now these were sawn from some basswood uh, blocks that I purchased it's, it's more economical to do it this way but if you don't want to go through the trouble you can purchase those pre-dimensioned Kamiko uh, bar bar stock or bar strips. Well, that's it for today. Uh, need to get somewhere. Five thirty or so. It's quarter to five now. So I'll end the stream now. And uh, thanks for uh, attending. <laughs>